Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. It's Thursday. Maybe it's Wednesday night. Or it's Thursday night. Actually, we're not sure. Traditionally, it says Thursday. But it could very well have been Wednesday night. Or the week in which Jesus will be put to death. And it's the Passover week. The reason Jesus and his disciples have come to Jerusalem is to celebrate the Passover. Now, what is the Passover? Well, the Passover is the memorial ceremony, a ritual meal, in which for one solid week, the people engaged in the remembrance of the Exodus, where God had taken the Hebrew people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, out of Egypt, out of slavery where they had been for 430 years, and brings him back to the land that he had showed to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did he do that? How did he deliver them from the bondage of the Pharaoh? Well, he sent Moses, his servant, back to the land, and Moses, as God's spokesman, demanded that the Pharaoh let the people go that they might worship Yahweh in the wilderness. He refused. But ultimately, God humbled him by a number of ten plagues that came. Now, the last plague was the death of the firstborn. The firstborn of animals, firstborn of humans. Every firstborn throughout the land would die. The death angel would pass through. This affected the Hebrews as well as the Egyptians. But God had a way of escape for his people. He told them to take a lamb in preparation for this, to keep it a few days, and then to slaughter it on a certain day and take the blood and apply it to the doorpost of their dwelling. And then to go inside their dwelling, shut the door, and not come out till the morning. They were to eat a certain meal. They were to eat roasted lamb and eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And they were to stay in the blood-covered house so that when the death angel came through, he would pass over them while he was slaying all of the firstborn of Egypt, animals and humans. This is what led to the Pharaoh changing his mind and basically begging the people to leave at that point. And so this is the Passover. The death angel passed through the land, but because the lamb had been slain, and his blood had been applied to their household, the death angel did not touch the people in it. Why? Because the lamb had died in their place. This is the Passover ritual. And so Moses gave this law that when they got into the land, they were to observe this ceremony perpetually. They were to kill the Passover lamb, take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that's in the basin, Touch the lintel and the door doorposts with the blood that's in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh passed through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this rite as a statue for you and for your sons forever. Now the death angel did not continue to go through the land, but they were to always remember that it was the blood of the lamb that spared them from the death angel and from the judgment. Thus the people of Israel went out, and they did so as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. So this is one of the three times of the year when the Hebrew men must all assemble in Jerusalem, and there the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed for the different households, and the blood applied, not literally blood applied to the houses at that point, but the lamb roasted, and the lamb consumed in their houses with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. Now, the reason all this is important is this is why Jesus and his disciples had come to Jerusalem. But not only did they come to observe the Passover, for they'd been doing that for the last three years, but they did it also because at this time, Jesus, the true Lamb of God, as John the Baptist had said, who would take away the sins of the world. The true Lamb of God 
had come to Jerusalem to be the Passover lamb. But first, he must have this meal with his disciples. So they sat down for what we would call the Last Supper. But the Last Supper means the last Passover supper, the last Passover meal that Jesus had with his disciples. But he also instituted at the same time, at the end of that meal, a new ceremony that we call the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving meal for the blood of the true Lamb of God, Jesus Christ himself. I invite you to go with me to the upper room and let's read about this meal that Jesus had with his disciples. I'm going to read from you to you from Mark chapter 14 and also from Luke chapter 22, sort of woven together so that we can get a better picture. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was approaching. We have to understand that this was a festival that lasted for eight days. Okay? You had the Passover day itself, the first one, and then you had one at the end. Both times there were to be a holy convocation. When it approached, the first thing you did was you had the Passover lamb. You had it killed, prepared, and you sat down for an ordered ritual meal with the family. So this is what Jesus and his disciples will be doing. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was approaching. The chief priest and the scribes were looking for a way to put him to death because they were afraid of the people. So they're looking out for him. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover so that you may eat it, so that we may eat it? Then the day of unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. Listen, he said to them. When you enter the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher asked you, where is a guest room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make the preparations there. So they went and found it just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. That means that Peter and John are the ones who killed the lamb. They're the ones who roasted the meat. They're the ones who got the meal prepared for Jesus and the other disciples to join them at the table in the evening. So they went and found it just as Jesus had told them they would find it, and they prepared the Passover. Now, it is believed that this is the home of John Mark. We meet him in Mark's gospel. Uh, at least we believe we meet him uh, in the garden that will follow this meal. So they begin the meal. If you've ever read Luke uh, and then you scratched your head and thought, well, when did he have the, when did he give him the cup and say, this is my blood? Uh, because that can provoke that question when you read Luke and then you compare it with, with Mark or Matthew. But Luke has given us the fuller account. He's letting us know about the Passover meal first. It's in the context of the Passover meal that Jesus institutes the meal of the new covenant, which is the sign of the new covenant that he has given us. So here they sat down when evening came and he said to them, I fervently desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. This is at the beginning of the Passover meal. So they have kindled candles. They have had a Thanksgiving kind of prayer. And then Jesus raises the first of four cups at this meal. It's a cup of diluted wine, wine with water poured into it. And he raises the cup up. It's the cup of sanctification. And they have a prayer that they all repeat, and then they drink from the cup. Then they proceed to eat the meal. Well, what did Jesus eat at the meal? 
Now, we're told uh, that he, he ate bread, unleavened bread. We're told that he eats lamb because it has been roasted and they're supposed to eat it. According to the law, he would have had a bitter herb. It could have been something like parsley that we have or some romaine lettuce or uh, horseradish or something of this nature. There's some kind of bitterness attached to it. More than likely, he would have had some kind of bean stew. We know this from some uh, archaeological findings dating back to the time of Jesus uh, in these kind of households. Uh, and from that, there would be a little bit of salt, maybe some kind of oil uh, that they would dip their bread in. Because he takes the bread and he dips it, if you remember the story, as they are eating. So let's listen to the story as it unfolds. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. Now, he had done this first at the beginning of the meal. At the beginning of the meal, he would not have said these words that we're going to read. He would have just given them the bread. They all shared a piece of the unleavened bread. That begins the meal along with the first cup. But now he gives them the bread, and this time he says something different. Not the ritual words that are given to us in the law or in the writings of the Talmud and the rabbis. He says, take it, eat it. This is my body. That's not in the Passover ritual. He is making a new ceremony. And then he took a cup. One says after the supper. So this is either the third or the fourth cup of the meal. After they've eaten the real, the meal, and they conclude the ceremony with a cup of wine. He took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Now, Mark has in here, truly I tell you, I will no longer drink the fruit of the vine of the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. But Luke has already told us that he said that at the beginning of the Passover meal. They conclude the meal by the singing of the hymn. Now, we know what hymns they sang because it's specified for us in the rituals. They sang Psalms 113, 114 at the beginning of the meal. And the conclusion of the meal, they sang Psalm 117, 116, 117, well, let me start, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So the last psalm that they would sing would be Psalm 18. And the last few words of that psalm, which are highly significant for what is happening to Jesus. Now, I want us to think for a moment about the liturgy of the Passover meal and then look at what Jesus did. There are traditional questions that were used at the Passover meal. Now, we know this both from the Bible and we know it from the Talmud and some of the earlier writings. Now, some of these questions are still used today, but the fourth question has been changed for today after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. But before the temple was destroyed in fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy and because of they had rejected him, these are the questions. Now, I'm giving you the questions, but I'm also adding to them, okay? What I'm adding to them are scriptures that indicate the meaning or why that question is asked. There's basically really only one question with a fourfold response. So let me just give you that question first. It says, why is this night different from all other nights? Well, it's different from all other nights because on all other nights we eat all vegetables, but on this night only bitter herbs. On all other nights we eat leavened products and matzah, but on this night only matzah. On all other nights we dip our food once, but on this night twice. That may have been an altered question. And the fourth question has to do with the lamb. It says, on all other nights we eat meat, which has been roasted, stewed, or boiled, but on this night we eat only roasted meat. And the reason for that is because that was the law God gave them on the first Passover. But now let's look at these questions again, and let me read Scripture to you. Why is this night different from all other nights? Well, that's found in the Scripture. It's found in Exodus chapter 12. 
And when you come to the land that Yahweh will give you as his promise, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians but spared our houses. Exodus 13, 14. With the strength of the hand, Yahweh brought us out from Egypt from a house of slaves. All right. On all other nights, we eat leavened products and matzah, that is unleavened bread. But on this night, only unleavened bread, matzah. Why? We eat only matzah because our ancestors could not wait for their breads to rise when they were fleeing slavery in Egypt. And so they were flat when they came out of the oven. Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Exodus 13, 3. On all other nights we eat all vegetables. On this night only bitter herbs. The answer, we eat only mora, a bitter herb, to remind us of the bitterness of slavery that our ancestors endured while in Egypt. Okay? On all other nights, we don't dip our food even once, but on this night, we dip it twice. And they dip it in salt water, by the way. The purpose of dipping the bitter herbs in the salted water is to remind us of the tears that our ancestors shed when they were in captivity in slavery. On all other nights, we eat meat which has been roasted, stewed, or boiled. But on this night, we eat only roasted meat. Why? Exodus 12, 6 through 10. Summary. We eat only the roasted meat of the sacrificed lamb because our ancestors were protected from the death angel by its blood applied to their doorpost. Exodus 12. Now, Christ is the fulfillment of the Passover. Now think about the four cups. They drank four cups. So the bread, Christ is going to take a piece of that bread and he is going to share it and say, this is my body which is given for you. They, we don't eat lamb during the Lord's Supper because Jesus is the Passover lamb. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. But we do drink from the cup. There are four cups in the Passover meal. Four cups of wine during the Seder. A Seder is just an ordered, pattern, ritual meal. One for each of the four promises that God gave them in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 7, when he sent Moses back to the land to deliver the people. Here is what the Word of God says with an identification of each cup. I'm reading from Exodus 6, 6. Therefore say to the Israelites, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out. That's the cup of sanctification. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. That's how they began the meal. I will free you from being slaves to them. How did he do that? He did that by the death of the lamb, okay, for his people, Judgment was poured out on all those for whom the lamb had not been sacrificed and who had not applied its blood to their households. But I will free you from being slaves to them. That's the cup of judgment. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. That was the third cup. It's called the cup of redemption. Because he might have been freed from judgment, but you need to get more than freedom from the death angel, you needed to be brought out from that land into a new area, into a new place. This is what it means by salvation, what it means by deliverance. We go from the constricted place of slavery to the place of freedom under the dwelling with God as his people. And so the cup of redemption, this is a cup more than likely that Jesus held up and said to them, this is my blood of the covenant. The fourth cup, I will take you as my own people. This is the cup of praise. And I will be your God. 
This is basically the cup of praise for covenant fulfillment. For the covenant that God is cutting and cut in the body of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, was the fulfillment of all the covenants that God had made. That is, I will take you to be my people. You will be my people and I will be your God. So this is what was going on in the last meal, the last supper that Christ had with his disciples. Then when they finished the the meal and the ritual meal, they concluded by singing from Psalm 118. And the last part of that psalm is so very informative. And so I want to share with you a psalm selection uh, that's based on Psalm 118. It's called, This is the Day. Let me read it to you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and sing. Hosanna, Lord, O give success. O Lord, salvation bring. That's Hosanna. Save, Lord. O blessed be the one who comes, comes in Jehovah's name. The blessings from Jehovah's house upon you we proclaim. That's the Lord's Messiah. That's the Christ. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is God. That's Yahweh is God. And he to us has made the light arise. Oh, bind you the, to the altar's horns with cords, the sacrifice. You see, when they killed the Passover lamb, they had to tie him when they were at the temple to the horns of the altar in order to slaughter him. So Jesus is going to be bound to the cross with nails and with ropes. He is the sacrificial lamb. O bind ye to the altar's horns with cords to sacrifice. The result of this sacrifice, Yahweh is God. The Lord is God. I give thee thanks, my God. I worship thee. O thank the Lord, for he is good. His grace will endless be. Yes, the reason his grace will endless be is because Jesus, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for all who believe in him. And we are saved by the blood of the Lamb, both now and for all eternity. Yahweh is God, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. So we remember this each time we take of the Lord's Supper. It's not so much a memorial of his death, as a remembrance of his person as the Messiah and of his resurrected life following the resurrection and his ascension into heaven, where he, as our great high priest, presents his own body, his own blood, as the atonement for our sins. And he presents himself as our representative, as our mediator, so that when God looks at us, He looks at us always through the sacrifice and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights.